record as well. Can you guys see the slides? All right, thank you. So, welcome. Good morning. Um, so we can sort of subtitles at Refence again. Um, so I'm not gonna show. So there is a subtitle on me. Um, all right. Hope you guys can hear me. Okay, so welcome back to PSM 150X. We are continuing with um, topic five, which is energy. All right, so yesterday we discussed the concept of work, and today we are further um, elucidating on this concept. All right, so as you found, um, solving problems with Newton's second law um, can be complicated. You know, when we look at the two body of, um, with, um, you know, it's a one body, a two body, and we had F equals MA. And you know, I know I have to set up a few equations and um, yeah, it takes a bit of work typically to, to solve these problems. However, there is an alternative approach and it's related to the speed of an object, right? So if the network can be calculated for given displacement, it stands to reason that the change in object speed is easy to evaluate. Obviously, there's a change in displacement um, over a particular time, therefore speed will come out. So what do we then do? Oh, yeah, there we go. We know that our work is equal to F times displacement. We then replace F net with M times A, right? Um, obviously, we are aware of that. That's Newton's second law. And we have delta X. What we then do further is take one of our equations of motion. And um, we obviously set the displacement as the subject of the formula, or rather A times delta X equals B squared minus the, the final minus the initial divided by two. We substitute it back into, into that formula over there, um, as you can see there on top, the first one. And then eventually we find out the, 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 the work the work formula now has become the kinetic energy at the final position minus the initial position. So half mv squared final minus half mv squared. Um, yeah, half mv squared um, initial. Right, so that's that over there. It's fairly straightforward. Um, again, uh, we, we, we're familiar with, with the, well, we still, familiar with the concept of kinetic energy anyway that's the energy which your body has um, when it moves um, the unit obviously is joules and like i said to you i'm definitely going to be asking you some dimensional analysis um uh, with with especially with a with a kinetic energy potential energy work formula all these formulas you 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 basically get in here all right so what's important to note like kinetic energy it's also scalar quantity. These are not vector quantities, so there's no direction to attach. And as a result, all of this here is, is essentially the kinetic, the work energy theorem. I'm sure you guys are aware of this. You've touched on this during your high school studies. So when I say work energy theorem, that formula over there should pop into your mind. So what it basically means the network done on an object is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy, where the change in kinetic energy is entirely, entirely to the object's speed, right? Obviously, um, the provision of the speed is necessary because the work, sorry, deforms or causes the object to warm up in validates the equation, although under most circumstances it remains approximately correct. So nevertheless, I mean, that's a state which you can just park really. But um, from the equation, positive network means that the final kinetic energy is greater than the initial. 
right? That means your object's final speed is greater than your initial speed. Obviously, we look at that with values. So therefore, so then, and so the network positive, so the positive network increases in object speed, and a net negative work decreases in speed. So it's important to note when you're just looking at the two things. So, yeah, long story short, that's what the work NG theorem is. Another way of looking at this um, is basically we have a hammer. You can you holding a hammer? Who, who is here? Um, let me just get someone who I can refer to here. Only seeing Zandile. Excuse us, Zandile over there. Um, okay. So we can also think of kinetic energy as a work of a moving object. Object. Um, and then oh, basically work of a moving object coming to a rest, right? So for example, um, suppose you have a hammer and it's on the verge of striking a nail, right? As you can see that figure over there, the moving hammer has kinetic energy, so it can do work on the nail. That's the kind of thing you want to think about. The work done on the nail is F times delta X, force distance, where F is the average net force exerted on the nail, and, the, and delta X is the distance the nail is driven into the wall. Okay, so that's the actual distance, not the distance it travels. That work, plus the small amounts of energy carried away by heat and sound, which we don't really care for, which I'll turn into the previous thing, is equal to the changing kinetic energy of the hammer. Um, we obviously derive the work energy theorem and assume the net force acting on the object was constant, right? So what things that typically happen is that sometimes uh, the force is not constant. I did mention that yesterday. So obviously we have to do some adjustments. But for all intents and purposes, for this level of physics, um, we typically assume a constant force unless they otherwise. I mean, yeah. But anyway, so you know, I, you know, I don't typically do this, but referring to the formula just before, which is this one, and I'd like you guys to obviously remember it. I think you guys can easily remember this. Um, true or false? The block slides at a constant speed, constant speed, constant speed, I'm saying that deliberately three times, down a ramp of acting on three forces. It's weight, the normal force, the kinetic friction. The combined need to work time of all these three forces, the block equals zero. Right? Is this true or false? Give it a go. True, yes. Stanton, Stanton, like he's on fire today. No one knows coffee he's drinking. It's definitely not drink coffee. Cabello. Uh, Singalaka, Siamonga, Wendy. Stanton, would you care to tell us why, maybe? This is the case. Um, morning, sir. Um, I think that Morning's. because the initial velocity is the same as the final velocity because it's that's constant. that's that's perfect brother that, nothing more nothing less that's true so obviously they're trying to trick here with all the forces but because of the constant speed vf is equal to vi therefore the, the change can take is zero therefore the work net is zero if that's what they're asking there yep uh, one more um uh, was it one more or two more okay cool yeah i think it's one more yeah it's one more than we do an example just to, just to get the brains warmed up here. So a block slides at a constant speed down a ramp while acted on three forces, right? It's weight, it's normal force, and depression. Each force does zero work on as the block slides. What are they asking here? Oh, is it true or false? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what they're asking. So they're asking, um, is this true or false? So they're saying that each force does zero work on the block as it slides. True or false? So they're saying, are the forces negligible? Essentially, I think it's I think it's the same way, you know. So block slides down at constant speed, down a ramp or acting on three forces: the weight, the normal force. And the friction, I think we can all see that. And each force 
So each force does negative work on the block. Okay. So obviously that depends on the direction. I mean, this is fairly easy one. Yeah, this is an easy one. Oh, so each force does negative work on the block. True or false? Remember, positive work is in the direction in which the block moves. So if the block is sliding, is there a force in line with that movement, which is essentially down the ramp? I did mention this in the previous at the previous uh, the, the, the lecture last week. Anyone? Who's brave? See if Stannis, Stannis coffee's early during the moment. It's false. Yes. Stannis coffee do you drink? <laughs> Can you perhaps ask why do you think it's false? Um, so I'm thinking because all of them are like acting with the direction of the block. Like the block is sliding down and the weight goes down. Um, yeah. It's only the well, thing. Uh, it's opposite. Well, you you you're close, and and it's a good a good point. But remember, um, remember the two components of the weight. You have the the, the, the mg cos right and the mg sin. Um, so the the gravitational force of the weight, the mg sin part, does positive work as a block size on the ramp. Remember, I explained it to the Koki and the and the in you know, the, the book. You guys remember that? So the one always going down is mg sin. So that does positive work. So yeah, it's false. So I mean, I, I think you'll. I have given you two, three marks for that explanation anyway. You're brave enough to, to think it's true. Okay, so without further ado, guys, let's, I'll give you guys two minutes. Um, we're going to go to our first example for this lecture, which is on uh, page, page one to eight. Get your books ready. Um, example 5.3, right? So yeah, let me just prepare my whiteboard and then yeah, but by quarter past we can commence. So get your book out, your textbook out, and we can actually solve this problem. Yes, Kremo. You have Kremlin Gossi. Okay, he's not saying anything. Okay, anyway, let me just prepare. Oh, I see. Kribble, so what I'm saying is that they're asking, is there any negative work done? If I'm correct. Obviously, I will look at the slides once I'm, when I'm done posting. So what I'm saying is false. And the reason why it's false is because the MG, MG sign component, which is always down the ramp, or the component of the weight, is causing the block to slide um, down. And that is the direction in which the block is moving, which obviously means that work is being done. All right, so let me just quickly share that guy. Oh, I hope you've got that table. Um, right.
All right, can we go? Can we all see this? Tell me if I can begin. Send me a thumbs up in the chat if you're ready. So you guys, so you guys are ready? I'm waiting on you guys, eh? So to go down there. Umelela, Charlie, Malusi. Nandile, Precious, Lulefefe, Aledi, Sibiwe. Let me know when you guys are ready. Cool, thank you. Let's wait for more of those. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So let's embark on the first one. So what I asked here, I might there's still a bit of basic, but I'll try to find one while you do the exercise anyway. So it says obviously you have to apply the work energy theorem. That's obviously the goal of this exercise. Um, and it says the driver of a 1.00 time to the power three kilogram car is traveling on an interstate i think it's a highway right at 35 meters per second slams on his brakes to avoid hitting a second vehicle in front of him. you can imagine being on the n2 you perhaps you know uber that's in a blue car and there's a a, a bucky or pickup truck as they call it um and as it drives and you're essentially slamming on the brakes there right um anyway which had come to this because of of the congestion is yeah so you're, you're on the end to this traffic um and yeah that bucket stops you break for the uber so after the brakes are applied and a constant kinetic friction of 8.00 times 10 to the power 3 newtons acts on the car right so that fk which is x, x opposite direction of motion says ignore air resistance typically the case and i'm asking at which minimum distance should the brakes be applied to avoid collision with the other vehicle right b if the distance between the vehicles is initially 30 meters at what speed would the collision occur all right so it's, 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 it sounds really you know it doesn't sound like 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 there's much happening here um but Essentially, it's, it's kind of straightforward in terms of the, the work in theorem. So let me just get my, my pen out. Okay, so let's see if my pen working. Why is my pen not, does not connect at all? Just give me a second. Let's see if my pen is working. It's not behaving today. Oops. Again. Um, can you guys hear me? Make sure it's not the computer doesn't seem like it's frozen. Okay, all right, seem like we're good. Yeah, so we know that. Hey, the work net is equal to the change in kinetic energy so i'll say half m v final squared minus half m v initial squared so this will give me for my my m there but obviously now it's all separated all right so they're asking at which minimum distance should the brakes be applied to avoid collision with the other vehicle right so obviously we're looking for distance and what's important to note here is that you know what you work your 
is always still equal to your force times distance. In this case, we have a negative friction because that's the only force kind of present on the body, which is stated. So basically the friction, that's, that's when the brakes are applied that's being used. And then we have delta X, right? So obviously that's the subject of the force. So I'd like to ask you now, uh, um, what are the two speeds? So what is my VF? And what is my VI? It's, it's, pretty, it's quite obvious, but obviously I want to see your analysis is in check here. I'll wait on you guys. What is my speed? Um, yes, exactly, Naledi. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Zero meters per second. And my VI, come on, it's there. It's going to be exactly 35. Thank you, Singalaka. Oh, what this essentially is another substitution. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna omit this guy. You know, we know that's all gonna be zero. So we left it off MV. Now it's interesting to note, we could have used even our, um, assume you had an acceleration, we could actually use our normal laws of motion to solve this problem. This is making your way. So that's 8.00. So that's 8,000 lights from 8,000 meters. So, right, that's three zeros. Okay, don't know, delta x is equal to minus a half. The mass given to us, and that should be a thousand as well around one ton could be like a Kia Picanto or something and we have VI squared right uh, oh so VI my bad we know what VI is and that's 35 right and then we have delta X okay the clear so you can solve delta X for me you do the math, I do the physics. All right, let's see what we get. I'm just looking for another nice and neat example of the exercise as well. So what did you guys to solve that, please? Um. Yep. I agree with that 76.56. So do we all get this? Straightforward, eh? I'm just going to check. Fantastic. Okay. So, what's always important to note is obviously. You need to understand the context of the question and, and, and what they're expecting to apply. So, yeah, and obviously with all my question papers, we have a heading saying energy. So you, you always know what principles to apply to a particular situation. I mean, obviously this could have been sort of easy confuses for the normal problem, but obviously it took about forces, speed, work, energy theorem. Nevertheless, so they're saying if the distance was 30 meters, right? Um, uh um uh, initially um only to, at what speed would the collision occur so now i want to know at what speed would the occur so in this case we are looking for v f so they're giving you the force right and they're giving you the distance now in this case uh what they're saying there you should apply obviously the brakes of 76.56 so that just to avoid the collision but in this case uh, if there are 30 meters apart, so the 76.56 means that's when the, the brake should be applied, right? At that particular time. But in this case, if there was 30 meters um, between them, then the collision obviously will occur, but they're asking now at which speed. 
So what you need to do now is apply exactly the same thing. Just move back. Um, yeah, maybe. And that's going to be, again, the half m squared minus half m squared squared. All right. So we, we will know that, again, the friction is a player. So it's minus fk times delta x times the same down here. That's the same. In this case, we have 8,000 again. But obviously now this is 30. So they're asking it, you know, what will, what will be the speed be at a particular time? Um, and over here, we know that oh, we're looking for, so that's a half times 1,000 times VF, that's our unknown, minus a half times 1,000 times vi which was 35 squared okay so what you're looking for is vf so obviously you're gonna wanna take this guy and add it to the left hand side and that will equal obviously this over here the half mv just to move the board for you and you guys can solve the remaining part. Okay, sure you guys can do this. So what is my VF? So that's what they're basically asking me. So I was looking for another example. Let's see if I can find one. Let me know if you, if you got it. Yep, 27.29, you guys get it? Fantastic. And that's the speed at which the collision occur at 30 meters. Which is a decent amount of speed. How many kilometers is that? Approximately, yeah, 98 kilometers per hour. If it didn't be damaged in that crash. Okay, get it. Do we all get this? If not, please let me know. Do we all get it? Okay, fantastic. All right. So I wanna give you two small ones again. Well, you obviously have to do exercise 5.3. I'm just gonna place it on the board and I'll give you guys um, five minutes, well, not five minutes, just under five minutes, maybe three minutes for this one. Then I'm gonna give you one more, which maybe we can work together. It's just the exercise, just getting and moving. And we're gonna do one more, then we're gonna move on to conservative, non-conservative, and grab the gravitational potential energy. 
And you're obviously roughly familiar with it. And we basically done. Right. All right. So, yeah. Three minutes starting now. So in this case, a police investigator measures straight skid marks to the seven meters long in an accident. Obviously, it's telling us when the car applied the brakes to when it stopped. And they they're assuming a friction, um, frictional force and car mass as the same as the previous problem, which was 8,100. What is the minimum speed of the car when the brakes locked? So I hope you all got that, right? So what is your VF? What is your VI? So we need the brakes lock. Anyone? So a quick one. What are we finding? What's my VF? What's my VI before you proceed? Just to see if you understand the context of the problem. Check here. Exactly VF is zero and you're trying to find VI. Yeah, Stanton, please tell us that coffee you're drinking. It's clearly working. All right. So I'll give you guys some time to solve this one and you have one more to do for me. You can post the answer in the chat.
Fantastic guys. Right, so I didn't think there's a need for me to do it, so that's why I thought of getting one more. So just give me a second and I'll place it for you. It's an example from another textbook. So I'm hoping you guys are gonna Let's see, let's see. I'll give you another five minutes for this one. This is, a, this is also a Stanton pulling sled here. I'm just pulling the sled yesterday as well. So the initial, so so is the initial velocity in a positive or negative direction. The initial velocity, they're all in the same direction. But I mean, with the formula, Remember, FK would be negative, I think. Remember? So VF would go away. It's negative, remember? If you look at this, Ms. Charlie, it's negative half MVI squared. Yeah. I think I've answered the question. So the next one, obviously, this is incorporating both we've done um, yesterday and before. And yeah, okay, it's from another textbook I found. But what they basically want is a work done on the boy, right? Which it could be straightforward. And then they're asking what is the final speed of the sled? So yeah, I'll leave this one up to you. Just put it here. And then we're gonna move on with me talking again. All right, so five minutes for this one.
Right. So what is the work done? Anyone? I'll first talk about the answer. Before I move on. The answer should be, I'm just checking for you quickly. Um, 84.3 joules, right? I always expect a unit. Are we content with that? Hey, no, 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 no. That's definitely not right, uh, Joseph and Lily. That's the work done. How did you guys get that answers? I'll give you guys left time there. And guys, please always attach a unit with your um a unit with your, with your value. Work done on the boy. Yeah. Oh, maybe it could be the sled, eh? I see, I see that maybe the way you guys are thinking about it. Maybe it's the way it's phrased, eh? Yeah, but the work done on the boy is also the total work done on the sled. So yeah, that's the same, that's the same. VF, ah, ah. I'm looking at the, yeah, sorry, 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 my bad, my bad. I'm looking at the wrong answers. It's 19.2. <laughs> I was just checking now. Yes, 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 yes. Forgive me, forgive me. Where is my razor here? Yeah, that's 19.2. Sorry, that's correct. Yeah. Yep. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And then your VF is no, that should be, ah, uh, your VF should be 2.5. Anyone get that? That's your, that's for Yeah, so forgive me for the first one. Yeah, 2.4, that's fine. Do we get the 2.5? Yes, okay, fantastic. You can do this, you're definitely on the right track. I can assure you. Oh. Can we all get a 2.5 before I move on? Should I solve this, that last piece for you, or are you good? So I can show some of the work done. Okay. Okay, Cabello. Um, so it's it's quite simple. It's basically the force going in this direction. So we know that work is F cos theta times D. Um, the force obviously is given as 11 newtons, right? Um, cos would be 9, and the distance obviously would be 2. And if I conduct that computation for you, you should get exactly 
You got a look straight forward. Yeah. Um, are you guys good with part B before I move on? You guys could spot me. Okay, I'm assuming everyone's good. Just send me thumbs up so I before before I proceed. Guys, if you're not sure, you can always ask. Okay, thank you. So I'll stop. Thank you, uh, Makani. Um, and we can commence with the lecture. We thought you were done, we definitely not. Okay, so you're basically heading on to gravitational energy here. Um, so long story short. Let's see what you guys can see here. Uh, Okay, I'm not sure what you guys can see, just let me know. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Um, yeah, so this is also important, guys. So I'm going to probably ask you some, could be one of the only theories, could be in the next test at least. So make a note of this. Um, coming in the test. Yeah, so just knowing the difference between these forces. Okay, so generally there are two kinds of forces which we, we group, obviously in a mechanical sense um, and also in a microscopic level, we don't look at microscopic things. The one is called conservative and non-conservative, right? So what is a conservative force? So let me give you an example, then I'll just give you all these formal definitions. So the best, example of a conservative force is gravity, right? Um, and to understand um, basically what it means is I think of a diver. So I think of Elo standing there on top of that diving board there, wherever that is, um, on, on, a, on a 10 meter platform. So that's, that's quite a few, that's at least five or six of me. And the diver has to do work against gravity to make the climb, right? She had to climb up the stairs, uh, and then she climbs up. That's the first thing, right? So once at the top, she can recover the work which she's climbed as kinetic energy by taking the time. So again, the word conserve, uh, of, of, I'm sure, of conservation is obviously it's, it's like a word like to retain, right? To keep. So she does, she climbs up the stairs. It's kind of like, it's like a battery, she's storing energy, and she gets on top of the, of the, of, of the diving board. She can now kind of reclaim that energy by diving down, right? So a speed just before hitting the water will give her a, 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 um, her a kinetic energy equal to the work she done against gravity in climbing to the top of the platform. So as she's climbing up, I wish I, I had a nice image for this. She gets the energy and increases and as she kind of dives down, the work done because of climbing is kind of, um, 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 it's like removed as she eats the water. So what they say here is 
So we can we can think of it like a speed just before hitting the water will give her a kinetic energy equal to the work um, um, she did against gravity and climb into the top of the platform minus the effect of some non-conservative forces. Now, non-conservative forces, right, are things like air drag, if there's muscular friction, what you know, and some other stuff we'll talk about. So the idea of a conservative force is basically a force where what does the textbook say uh, where we can basically reclaim the energy back right um for instance the basically the energy nicely transfers from one form to another a non-conservative force right so say a non-conservative force is generally dissipative and again i expect you to remember the definitions with some examples at least um and you'll see which means it tends to randomly disperse the energy of bodies on which it acts. So for instance, um, this typically takes form in the place of heat or sound. So obviously friction, you rub your hands or, you know, on a car's tires, it breaks. Friction is basically even sound. So basically all the energy lost is, is, is called non-conservative. It's basically the energy we can't gain back. More examples, kinetic friction and air drag are good examples. Just thinking of, um, of examples even even on the on the sea the 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 the, 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 the ocean itself as a is a fluid that removes some energy again also propulsive forces like the force applied you know the force applied you've been talking about um they are also uh, um, non-conservative or the force um, by a propeller of a ship or submarine and basically work done against a non-conservative force can't easily recover so conservative forces they can be recovered with non-conservative cannot. So I expect you to do a bit of reading on this. Obviously, the notes are in the textbook, but again, make sure you understand the differences between a conservative force and a non-conservative force. Um, further different. Okay, let me just quickly check here. This is an example. So this this Eskimo here. Who's here? Who could, who, could, who could possibly be an Eskimo? Let me have a look here. Um, let's see. Uh, Mtutuzeli, for instance, is an Eskimo. And um, as he's dragging over that salmon, um, dragging the, 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 the sled over there requires a bit of work. So when Mtutuzeli basically is dragging the sled across the terrain with a non zero coefficient of friction, the network will be smaller. And then it would be in the case of no friction. So what happens is that the, that missing energy goes into warming the warming the sled and its environment. So these losses they can't be avoided, and all the energy can't be recovered. Like I said, these forces force are called non-conservative. So basically, all that forces we can't recover: friction, the F apply, the, the, the propulsion forces, um, air drag, heat, you know, through sound. We can't get them back. They just go into the universe essentially. And there's another way to characterize um, uh, um, conservative and non-conservative. Don't worry, I'll be talking too much here. We need it done. Um, and it's to do with the, the path dependency, right? So what they say there is that let's measure the work done by force of an object having between two points along different paths. So right. So looking at the first example on the left over there is that the work done by gravity on someone going down a frictionless slide, as in the one thing on the figure on the left, is the same as the one that is done or someone diving in the water, right? So this equality doesn't hold for non-conservative forces, right? So for example, if you look at the figure on the right now, you're sliding a, a book from A to D, that requires a certain amount of work against friction, um, and then and then um, also by sliding the book along the other three legs, which is from A to B, um, from B to C, and then from C to D, requires three times the amount of work, right? Obviously, because it's like, you know what I mean? Like A to D is quite simple, but going, going around the other path requires more work. So the point of that, if, if you can get it, is that we can also state the definition of a conservative force. So a, a, a force is conservative if the work it does moving an object between two points is the same no matter what path is taken. So, so my point is, if the path is the same, then um, 
uh, it's typically yeah with non-conservative forces doesn't have the property so what they state there conservative forces force work force whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, does moving object between the points is part so one is part dependent or, and, and one is isn't part dependent um no mention now properly and then basically what we can restructure the, the work energy theorem is it's basically the sum of the algebraic sum of these are not vectors of the non-conservative forces plus the conservative ones and obviously we already had a look a, a looked at that um i mean what's like the friction and, and, and it's just that i'm grouping it now and obviously that equals a change kinetic energy um this is what i actually want to show you and again the conservative force the, when the work done against a force is independent of the part taken so it's independent of the part taken as a conservative force and when it's dependent on the part taken it's non-conservative so for instance when i say depend on the path taken remember if we move in a certain direction and then we know that there's friction going behind us like us with applied force so the, the applied force is telling us which way the body is moving the frictional force is um telling us um, um you know we have to remove with the conservative force it doesn't really matter they one one example with gravity the force in the spring there are more examples in the buoyant force when we have um, a ship in, immersed in water you, you know what i mean and then obviously you could not conservative against the friction your air drag which tells us so one is path dependent and one is not path dependent. So some good definitions there and examples. And like I said to you, please make sure you go over this. So I hope, is there any questions before I proceed um, to gravitational potential energy? So send me three thumbs up before I move on. You're nearly there. Right, I think there is. So gravitational potential energy is something we're all familiar with, you know, it's again in high school studies. And what it essentially is, is basically like, like an object with kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion, can do work on another object, just like a moving hammer, can drive a nail into a wall. A brick on a high shelf can also do work and you can fall off the shelf, accelerate it down and hit the nose squarely, drive into floorboards. So that's another example. So in, in, in that essence, the brick is said to have potential energy associated from the right, because it's a location on the shelf, um, it can potentially do work. So obviously we're aware of this. They also state here that a potential energy is a property of a system rather than of a single object, because it's due to the relative positions of interacting objects in the system. So that's quite interesting, okay. So as an example, we have a book and it goes from one position or the physics college physics textbook and it goes to another. Um, and they're saying the work done by gravitational force basically equals the MGY1 minus the MGYF. So we're familiar with this. Obviously I'll try to walk, walk it further. Once again, the gravity is a conservative force. And for every conservative force, we find a special expression um called potential energy right so when we evaluate the potential energy right in terms of the work um potential energy like work again is, is a scalar quantity so just making aware we don't expect a particular direction so if you look at this example of the book um let's basically find the work done by this this book over here so what they say is that the negative of of the work is the change in the gravitational potential energy of the system and that's the, and from that expression we're able to identify the potential energy function essentially right so in the figure the book mass m falls through a through a height which is y delta y1 to a, a height yf um and this idea where the positive y could represent the position above the ground which is very important we obviously if we get forget air friction and the question is how much work is done it's quite simple it's exactly the same as you know your your force times distance like you know your, your force could be mass times acceleration times distance in this case we have mg 
times delta y. Right, so again, same story. And the, in this case, the angle is zero. You know, it's not at a particular angle. I mean, basically for that equation, obviously it's negative, it's going down. And again, when you're applying a work net, because it's a conservative force, you know, your work net is equal to your non-conservative part plus your conservative part. In this case, it's going to be gravity. Okay, so that's in, in essence all it is. We also can connect the gravitational work and gravitational potential energy. Um, yeah, that's essentially the same thing. Just taking it further, it looks like that. Um, and what's quite interesting to note there, yeah, so your non-conservative parts will typically be equal to your kinetic energy plus your potential energy. And your potential energy is typically mgh or mgy. Obviously, we know it's y, it's, it's, it's in the vertical direction. So this is not um, new to you. Um, so yeah, but this is again coming to the conservation of mechanical energy at the end of the day. And I think it's only what's important to note, obviously, I think it's a, we'll probably be the next slide over here. Um, again, just looking at this, we're just rearranging everything. Um, and we obviously get the same formula, which essentially talks to, you know, the, the preservation of mechanical energy. So let me look at the book says here. But in essence, we just further developed our um, um our work energy theorem into into this now but i mean we'll start to look at the potential energy first so before we get into the conservation of mechanical energy we want to look at um um that's what i'm looking for here um, the reference for gravitational potential energy that's very important so just reading off it says in solving problems involving gravitational potential energy it's important to choose a location to which the energy is equal to zero. That's obviously very important. It's a reference point. Be familiar with something like this. Because this is the same as choosing the place where y equal, equals zero. The choice is, is completely arbitrary because the important quantity is the difference in potential energy. And this difference will be the same regardless of the cho choice of zero level, right? But be aware, though, once you decide on, on this position, it must remain fixed for a given problem. So it's all relative in essence. And yeah, so you can choose different parts, uh, you know, it, it's all relative. So it, it's not the, the potential energy, a lot of works for the change in versus like the absolute position. So just a, a quick example, explain articulating what I've said to you. For example, let's consider a book at several locations there at someone's res, for instance. So you have a book at A, B, and C, right? So when the book is at A, a natural zero level for potential energy is at the surface of the disk, correct? Um, when the book is at B, the floor might be a more convenient uh, reference. So it's obviously just look at where the book is going. And when you look at C, where the book is out of the window, obviously the surface of the earth will be the log logical choice for um, the zero level of potential energy. So it's obviously a relative on what you want to choose where the book is falling. So if you look at A, the book's obviously for against the table. So obviously you want to choose the table as a reference. B, it, it's, it's going to the floor. C, right down to the ground. So what's important here to note is that the choice, however, makes no difference. Any of the three reference levels could be used as a zero level, regardless whether the book is at A, B, or C. So just that, this is just for articulating, you know, it doesn't really matter. It just depends how far the book is going to fall. So basically the minimum or the book falls essentially we ought to take the reference level or the highest point um i think that's that's kind of thing and then anyway this is the conservation of mechanical but now we're just going to solve maybe one example and then yeah i think we touched on potential energy at least so is there any questions before i proceed if not just send me some thumbs up and then we can move on Any questions, guys? Don't be shy. Oh. Any 
Any questions? I'll wait on. Thumbs up if I'm on. To make sure you guys are all on the same page. Maybe you guys are all absorbing. Welcome to PSM 150X. I didn't say you should register, but here you are. Okay, so let me just go back to my whiteboard. Guys, just let me know if I can move on. How are you guys feeling? Still ready for more? Hello? um i believe so otherwise just just send me an email um you're talking about the slides right just uh yeah okay anyone else any thumbs up before i move on Thank you, thank you. Some more. Thank you, Miss Charlie. All right, so let's get through this one. Let me do it done for the day. I'm hoping to see you guys on campus on Thursday at least. And then, yeah, I'll probably like once a week thereafter. All right, um, let's see what the, what, what, the, what the mafia has allowed us to do. Okay, so, so we have to calculate the gravitational potential energy for different choices of uh, reference level. So we have um, Cabello again, Susa, and she's on a holiday and she's going to be skiing. Right. So, it's, well, as they say, a 60 kilogram skier is at the top of the slope, showing that figure over there at the initial point A. Again, very important reference point. She is 10 meters above the point B, exactly 10 meters. Um, they're saying setting the zero level for the gravitational potential energy. At B. So that's the, the zero level is at B. Um, find the gravitational potential, the potential energy of the system in the skier is at A and then at B. Right. So we know our formula is quite easy. Potential energy at A. Uh, so I'll just call this A here. And someone give it to me. And they said here, it's important setting the zero level at B. So this is our zero level. Right? Someone just quickly work it out. It's not difficult, guys. Straightforward. Um, that is correct. I think I stated, yeah, because you can recover the force. As you as you push something down, then the force will push it up. That should be conservative, yes. That's correct, Naledi. Um, 5880 what? That's my question. quite simple 60 
times 9,8 ZA and times what's it is 58802. Right. And what is my potential energy at B? So where is it coming from here? In this case, um, the ski is at A and then B. She's starting here and she goes there. So what's what the potential energy at B? Exactly at zero. So potential energy at B is zero. All right? Because there's no height here. All right? And what they're saying here is, what is the, the, are they asking the difference? Not, okay, I think that's four, right? Okay, so B, okay, this is quite, what's the question? Okay, so they're saying, find the gravitational potential of the energy system is at A, then at B, right? Finally, find the change in potential energy when the scale goes from A to B. So if you're going from A to B, it's saying the, the, the potential energy, um, the final, just like the kinetic energy, minus the initial. Am I correct in saying this? Yep. So our final um, is zero, because that's at B. And our initial was 5880. All right. Therefore, it's going to be, I'll change it. I'm having this a bit funny here, sorry. So it's. Just looking here. It's going to be equal to zero minus five eight eight zero, oh, and it'll be negative five eight eight zero oh, two. So that, that is our difference, right? I think that's quite simple enough. Um, but you never get a problem like this. It'll always include work, friction, friction work, and yeah, and kinetic and stuff. But just it's obviously building up the knowledge. All right. I hope you all got that. Is it all clear to everyone? So anyway, the next one, we have now uh, the Peter's problem with the zero level at point A, right? So we just go here again. It's quite simple. This is just, this is showing the reference here. So this is at zero. Now we're assuming this is zero now. And the asking, yeah, that's basically right. So we just do exactly the same, right? So now our initial, well, our P, E, and A, what is it now? Can someone please tell me? What's our initial our potential energy now? Quick, quick, guys. Let's add the reference. Should be zero. Okay, Stanton's my only student. And then our potential energy at B, because now we're making this A, what we just do is say 60 times 9,81 times negative 10. Remember, we're always using our X, Y coordinate system. It's key. And obviously, we get an answer of negative um, 5.88. 5880 joules. All right. So then the last one. Um, I, mean, I don't want to waste too much time. Obviously, the difference will be will, will be the same. Um, at C, they're saying the zero level is two meters higher than point B. So they're saying the zero level is here now. This is a new zero level. All right, so obviously that's going to be eight meters. But eight meters from this from here to here, it's eight meters. I'm just gonna do it like this. So that's eight meters, and that's our new zero level. All right, so then they're asking now. Um, Repeat again with the zero level five. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure exactly where the reference here is, but let's see what the potential energy is. Yeah, it's still from A to B basically. It's moving from A to B. But now the only difference is that the zero level is at 
is there on top now. So someone give me the first one. Uh, Zero. Let's throw that as previous. Someone just give me C's answer. Just give me um, potential energy at A and then at B. So what I'm saying is A is still there, this is still B. So I'm going to ask you for P, E, A and then P, E. B, E, B. All right, so for the first one, yep, that's that's basically, that's perfect, 4704, that's at 8 meters. The Stanton's getting a distinction in the next test, the way things are going. And what would be at B now? So now the reference, so what you're saying B is at the reference level, right? And what it also means is that it's still going from, let me just correct this, not say this is at B. Um, B is still at the bottom, sorry. But this is the reference level. So if this is eight, and that, that is two down, then in this case, this would be, negative two meters so that would be at b and that will give you minus 1176 exactly the man if you're on fire today and the change of potential energy obviously will be the difference over two and if you do that you still get five eight eight joules i mean you guys can go check it out yourself all right so Guys, thank you for joining today's lecture. Hope you learned something. And um, yeah, we will see each other on Thursday. I'll communicate to you by tomorrow when we'll either be on campus or online. Um, but I'm hoping on campus at least just to get a one session in for the week and make sure you practice. So you can literally study the next few parts by yourself just to get yourself warmed up. And yeah. Um, but anyway, guys, have a good day further. And I'll see you. See you soon. Cheers.